Hi, I'm Jill Bernard from Huge Theater in the United States, and I would like to know more about improv that is not in the United States. So I'm making a video series of interviews in which I talk to one person in another country to at least get one point of view on how improv started in their home country. Today I'm talking with Gail Dornvid Perry about France. I'm a, an improviser that lives currently in Amsterdam. I'm originally from France. I uh, grew up in the region around Strasbourg near Germany, and that's also where I discovered improv. I'm a, an improviser, a teacher, and, uh, and a trainer. I tend to travel a lot when it is possible. Improv in France is mostly rooted in, the, in, in one format, that is the match, the improv match. Um, it's a competitive format that uh, is a mock-up of a hockey match. So it is traditionally played, it has been made and in, invented in Canada and Quebec, in the French-speaking part of Canada um, in the late 70s by uh, Gravel and Le Duc were like the two creators of uh, of that format. And they were uh, seeing there was not a lot of people in theaters, but Canada loves hockey. So they wanted to do something that was similar. So it has everything that is taken from hockey. It's, it's played in three third times. It's separate in three little parts. It has, uh, it is played in a ring. The audience is at least traditionally on three sides. There is a referee, like you play against each other at the end of every scene the audience vote for one player or the other even if you play the same scene together if you come from two different teams you're going to be voted for one or for the other uh it has plenty of like little things like uh penalties and and good things and and uh something that is very different from um a theater sports because the two formats are often compared is uh, for instance the fact that the scenes are announced the length of the scenes the duration of the theme the scenes are announced beforehand so like the referee will be the next scene will last for two minutes and 35 seconds and etc uh, etc et and it's timed and there's a whole ceremonial around it uh i have personally a love-hate relationship with that format uh because it is the format I grew up with in improv, uh, and it's also definitely the type of improv that doesn't make me be the the best. Um, I'm not great at being punchy, efficient, and and <laughs> and flirt with the audience, and I'm not great when it comes to competition. So I I have yeah I have this love hate relationship. What I recognize is that it's a format that is very popular. And a lot of people come to see it. It, it packs up theaters. Uh, the biggest theater I've seen a, a live improv match in was with more than 1,800 people in the audience. Wow. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's just like, it's just very popular and it is very efficient. It works. It's a show from the start to the end if it's well done. Um, so basically, that was invented in Quebec and very quickly because uh, Quebec is French speaking, it has been important in Europe, um, at least in the French speaking part of Europe. So Belgium, the French speaking part of Belgium, the French speaking parts of the uh, of Switzerland and France. Is there a tradition it, of hockey in France? Like, did it make sense from a hockey all. perspective? No. <laughs> no, like really not. <laughs> it really doesn't make much sense for French people. Um, but somehow this whole ceremonial stayed for a very long time. Uh, there are a lot of companies today and associations today that that um, got away from that, uh, got away from the playing in a ring, playing with also hockey jerseys and stuff. This traditional match, you play in a full uh, hockey mock type of thing. Um, but but somehow it was so colorful and strict in the same time that it got adopted very quickly. I think it's mostly uh, acting students that started to do that. We have a very little relationship between stand-up and improv in France. It's much more, um, improv is a, is a 
is a place where you will find a lot of students of all kinds, like I guess anywhere. Um, but people that want to professionalize in that are mostly actors either from scripted or that are just studying to be actors, uh, actors that want to do tape, uh, films and movies and stuff like that. Um, and I think at the start, if I look at Strasbourg, for instance, it was a bunch of friends um, and the people initiated were people that wanted to become actors and that were also on the side doing scripted work. So in, in Paris, I think it arrived in the beginning of the 80s um, and uh, it has been developed a lot in, um, in the the re in one of the region around Paris, not in Paris center, but around um, one of the person that is considered as a, a father of improv in France is uh, Alain de Bois. He, uh, uh, he, <laughs> uh, his name is, uh, uh, his uh, nickname is Papi, which is like <laughs> grandpa. Um, and he is the one that gave the first uh, a set of like workshops a little bit around France. So I know that in Strasbourg, the first workshop ever of improv that happens was taught by him. So he brought a little bit the concept, the idea of, hey, you can do that and you can play a match. Um, and uh, he is uh, today, he has been creating a lot of structure and he is one of the few creators that have been recognized officially also by the governments and stuff. So he has created like, he was at least a, a godfather of, of a project to make kids in middle school uh, play improv, play improv match. And especially in, in, the, in this, like the suburbs of Paris where uh, school is not super easy and theater is often not the priority of kids there. Um, and he thought that improv was a great way to bring some sort of theater that stays connected to the reality of the people that practice it. I think um, their match is still a very big part of improv in the French speaking landscape. Um, the thing that happened, one, it's a paradox, but one big, uh, uh, um, I think what being a corner at some point that happened is that in the, um, I think at the end of the nineties or beginning of the two thousands, um, there has been a big, uh, a big wave of trials intended by the families of the founders of the match in Quebec to try to make people pay the license and not use the name of the <laughs> match and the concept of the match. And that uh, um, has led to some associations and companies being willing to pay to continue to play in that, in that format, but it was pretty expensive. And so there are also other companies that just decided to not play match as it was traditionally built so continue to play a broken broken version of match or at least their own perso personalized version and i think that opened the door to a lot of questioning of what was the norm for like 25 years um and some of the questioning has been on like are all the rules still making sense? Is the strictness of the match at the service of the show? Uh, is the fact that we now have someone that will count down uh, for the end of your scene, five, four, three, <laughs> two, one, and whistle, even if you knew you're in the middle of a sentence, still making sense? Um, and there are, up, there are pros and cons in both, to be, to be fair. Uh, but I think it has been a big change for a lot of associations because suddenly people were not just following the rules anymore, but needed to think about the rules and which ones they wanted to apply. I think in Strasbourg, it has been a big, um, to, the association in Strasbourg is one of the oldest in France. Uh, it has been founded in the very beginning of the 90s. And it's a it's a big association. The, the match association in Strasbourg is a very big association. They produce something like 50 shows a year. It's completely voluntarily run. There is no professionals in there, but it's like 50 shows a year. Uh, half of the shows are in a venue that has 200 seats and that is sold out all the time. Um, their, their big shows are in a bigger room that has like five or 600 seats. Um, and that association has been leading a little bit the changes in the match landscape 
Uh, and one of the reasons why they have done that is also because they were part, and they're still uh, part of the Mondial d'Improvisation. So it's like a, uh, uh, a tournament uh, that happens every year that is uh, bringing together Quebec, like the great countries of Quebec, uh, the French-speaking part of Belgium, the French-speaking part of Switzerland, France, and uh, Italy for a little bit now. Uh, and it happens every four years in one of the founder uh, countries. So once every four years, it's, it's in Strasbourg, but um, it also brings people to travel to each other and, and have a lot of like, ooh, we've been to that festival now for 10 days playing in Quebec, and we've seen other shows and other types of playing. What can we bring and what can we um, think again in, in the way we're playing, um, we're playing match? So it's an association that kept focusing on the match, but that was also pretty forward thinking in what do we want on stage? How do we want to handle that? Uh, and I think that was, that was nice. I think talking to you, I get a feeling that most of the great French improvisers that we know, if you walk it back far enough, they probably got their start in match or in match adjacent. <laughs> that is uh, almost for sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, like there is not a lot of French speakers traveling in the English in, in the English speaking world, but all the ones I know come from Match. <laughs> so the Match is a format that is extremely demanding. It is um, it is requiring from people to touch to a little bit of everything because the referee is the one designing the Match and deciding what will be in there. And I've seen matches that would start with like. The next scene will be a solo, one person per team, uh, and we will see a monologue in the style of Shakespeare for the for eight minutes per team. And you're like, okay, now we have to do that. Um, and it's easy to. There are plenty, of, plenty of spec of shows, but I guess like everywhere that that do not really try to do whatever genre or whatever uh, restriction they have. But um, but the format itself, if you want to play it well, you need to really try hard. Uh, and that, that makes you, as a player, I think, touch to a lot of different things. Um, I've been teaching match here in the Netherlands uh, for a few sessions with a, a local team in Amsterdam of, <laughs> of people that are pretty experienced. And, and there were plenty of things that were pretty obvious to me where I was like, well, oh, just do this. And people would be like, but, how <laughs> and, and i don't know i had in front of me people that had like 15 uh 10 15 years of experience in improv but because they are used to 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 play only what they want to play there is also this thing of like only playing what you're good at over and over and in match i think you have at least the opportunity. It's not true for everyone because you can always like sneak your way in, but you <laughs> at least have the opportunity to explore things that are new constantly and to try to improve in that. And that's, I think, a very nice thing. And the second thing that I, I that is completely meta, but it's, I think improv in France is, is a big mess of, um, uh, it's, amateur as hell in so many ways. And people don't know yet the difference between the amateur group and the professional groups and how, like basically it would be like seeing a match, a football match, but you don't know if you go see like the team of Brezhnikersheim that is playing on Sunday afternoon, or if you go see a match from the, the World right. Cup. Oh. Um, and, but, but even though it's a big mess, it is, um, it is taken seriously uh, most of the time. And it is not inconceivable for an amateur group to have an ambitious show where they're like, let's rent this room where we have 300 seats. And you know what? We're going to fill it in. And that's, I, I like that attitude of, of uh, get going. <laughs>